The second part begins with Yi Jae pointing the gun at death. He shoots, then quickly tries to come back to avenge Taiyu, but the gun doesn't work. As he turns around, he understands that just like water doesn't get wet and fire doesn't burn, death doesn't die. It shows him a bit of its true face to remind him of who it is. After taunting him by transforming into his beloved Jisoo with a sadistic smile on her face, she sends him to the next life. This time he reincarnates into the body of Zhang Gyu Cheol, who always enjoyed drawing from a young age. Despite his talent, he was never recognized until one day he saw a woman fall from a building and realized that his art came from death. Portraits inspired by deceased people were worth a lot of money in the foreign market. So he began to take his art more seriously and started pursuing his victims himself. His traces of violence were recounted in the news as those of a serial killer. Meanwhile, his paintings were auctioned for millions. According to the psychopath, a total of 15 people were said to have been reborn in his works of art. Yi Jae becomes physically ill to the point of vomiting as he receives all these memories, but he accepts to use the body of a demon to hunt another. He returns to the scene of his last death and finds Jisoo's pen inside a sewer. That night, Taiyu convinces the lawyer to take the blame for the hit and run, promising him one of the company's branches to manage. The car's chip, which recorded who was driving, ended up in the sewer along with the pen. While watching an interview of his enemy, Yi Jae's nose starts bleeding and he faints. Upon waking up, he discovers he has a tumor in his head and only one month to live, which he considers more than enough to conclude his plan. Ironically, Taeyu is interested in one of his most expensive works and is waiting for him in his gallery. When they meet, Yi Jae taunts him, revealing that he uses the blood of his victims to create artworks. He says they both have in common the belief that they are gods when they take people's lives. Taeyu doesn't like hearing that comment, but the artist quickly says it was just a joke. Alone with the killer of his beloved in the gallery, Yi Jae considers killing him but remembers that death warned him that if he tried to kill anyone, she would interfere and send him straight to hell. He then tells Taiyu that he will sell the painting to him, but wants to deliver it personally. And for that, he needs his address. After the mass for his brother, where his father clearly favored him, Taiyu receives a call informing him that his father suspects him of being a psychopath and is investigating him. Irritated, he takes his pills and speeds away in his car, passing by two detectives who soon chase him. Cornered on a construction site, he is approached by the officer who realizes that Tae Yu was under the influence of illegal drugs. However, with just one call, Tae Yu resolves the situation by speaking directly to the police commissioner. In addition to slapping the rookie cop several times, humiliating him and showing who really rules the city. Upon arriving home, he finds Yi Jae already waiting for him. Yi Jae provokes him by stepping on his luxury car. They start a fight, and Yi Jae gives Tae Yu a beating. Taiyu runs to his Ferrari, grabs a gun, and shoots Yi Jae. Believing he has killed him, Taiyu approaches, but Yi Jae, wearing a vest, surprises him, overpowers him, and takes him inside the house. However, as he prepared for his revenge due to the tumor in his head, he faints. Upon waking up, he finds himself tied to a stretcher. Taiyu reveals how he discovered his taste for death. One day, on his way to the office, he accidentally hit a man standing in the middle of the street the same man Yi Jae saw at the beginning of this series that changed his life forever. However, Taiyu felt pleasure seeing the man suffer on the ground and felt like a god at that moment. When Yi Jae earlier restrained him and revealed the details of what he would do to him, it left him even more excited because he had never thought of causing death in that way. It was a gift, and now he will test this new method on Yi Jae. And this was the most agonizing and painful death Yi Jae experienced. However, to death's surprise, Yi Jae was laughing at her. There were hidden cameras that recorded the businessman committing that atrocity. It was all part of his plan. Since he couldn't kill him, he would destroy him in another way. Death sends him to his next life, An Ji Hyung, a detective who lost his father when he was a child and was also a policeman. When he passed the police test, his mother fell ill with fear that he would die like his father. He then made a promise not to take risks and decided to become a mediocre detective just to survive. His colleagues don't respect him, considering him a coward. Even after his mother's death, he continued to back down in the face of action, losing the respect even of his partner, Ji Hun. On the street, he spotted his former cellmate who killed him in the fifth life. While the man threatened another with a knife, Yi Jae approached and manipulated him by saying that he was his former cellmate revived, making him confess the crime in front of everyone who was filming. 
When attacked, he used his skills and easily immobilized him for other police officers to take him away. His video went viral on the internet and TV, increasing not only his respect but also that of the entire force. Yijie returns to the artist's house to retrieve evidence of his last death. However, while his partner called for reinforcements, Yijie made a copy of the recordings and erased the original videos. Several pieces of evidence were found there indicating that the artist Zhang Yu Chiol was the serial killer who turned his victims into art. This made his boss very happy, even questioning if he wasn't possessed, as he went from a coward to the best police officer in the force overnight. Someone not pleased with this was Tae Yu, who, upon arriving at the scene, is stopped by the police officer who taunts him, claiming that killers always return to the scene of the crime. Moreover, he sees on TV that the detective is becoming a phenomenon in crime fighting. He then calls his contacts and plans the death of the hero detective. Suspicious of the system, Yi Jae hands over the crime videos directly to a reporter. Later, he discovers that his mother was being investigated because of the backpack full of money he had left for her, as cameras filmed it being delivered by one of the victims under investigation. He talks to her pretending to be a detective to see if she was okay, and at that moment, he sees her wearing the shoes he gave her as a gift. He takes advantage of the untied shoelaces to prevent his mother from realizing that he was emotional seeing her in this situation. Later, he leaves food at his mother's door and ends up being cornered by a thug sent by Tae Yu. Meanwhile, Tae Yu discovers that his father was making progress in the investigations against him. Furious, the psychopath corners a driver on the street and stabs him just to relieve his anger. One of his TV informants warns him about the video of his murder delivered by the detective to the press. When he tries to call the man sent to kill Yi Jae, he finds out that he is the one who was captured and was already in the police station. Using his influence, Tai Yu has the police commissioner himself organize a meeting with the detective. Tai Yu tries to bribe him with a lot of money and influence, promising to make him one of the most powerful people in the city. Yi Jae refuses and says that his goal is to destroy him completely. However, later Yi Jae sees Tai Yu playing another one of his cards. He decides to surrender to the authorities, confessing to being responsible for the death of Zhang Yu Chiu, but claims that he did it to protect himself because he had been kidnapped and would have been another of his victims. Moreover, the images presented on TV were only of the killer taking Tai Yu, confirming his version. He would still be in custody, but a movement created by the company claimed that everyone was with him, even calling him a hero. Since EJ did not make a copy of the video images, he had no way to prove to his boss that the images were forged. Tai Yu walked out of the police station through the front door as an innocent that night, while the detective was kidnapped by some corrupt officers. Taking his pills and relaxing in his jet heading out of the country, Tai Yu ends up having an unpleasant surprise. He sees a recording revealing all the murders he committed and hears a warning that the plane will explode in 30 seconds. Desperate, he grabs the parachute and jumps from the plane just before the explosion. He manages to land safely, but only to be run over in the same instant. The detective then appears in front of Tae Yu. It is revealed that two weeks earlier, in his life as a hired killer, he knew where the crime boss kept the dirt on clients. He took the HD with evidence and with more memories of his brother, knew he kept his pills in the pen and switched them with a sedative. His partner had always been by his side and threatened his own colleagues to lie to Tae Yu. And using the skills from all his lives so far, he executed his plan by placing bombs on the plane. As it was taking off, it was shown to the press and on TV, him hiring the crime boss to kill his own brother, in addition to the video where he reveals all the crimes before killing the serial killer. Before Tai Yu could wake up, Yi Jae jumped from the plane and waited for him on the ground while following the traces of the explosion and a GPS. However, driven by the thirst for revenge, Yi Jae decides to kill him. Not even the appearance of death, who would take him straight to hell, made him stop. Until Jisoo's pen falls from his pocket, and believing it to be his beloved trying to protect him, he gives up killing Tae Yu, thus escaping spending eternity in hell. Tae Yu gets up and tries to attack him from behind, but the wind pulls his parachute, causing him to be run over by a passing truck. In the police station, the detective found Tae Yu's lawyer and said that the only thing that would spare him from trial and give him innocence was the memory card. The lawyer was emotional and grateful, but Yi Jae destroys the memory card because he deserves to rot in prison for all the times he covered up Tae Yu's crimes. The repercussions for Park Tae Yu were significant. Three police commanders were removed, and his father resigned, leaving the company in the hands of the shareholders. Yi Jae visits Tae Yu in the hospital, who only continues to live thanks to life support and has lost both legs. 
Visiting his ex-girlfriend's memorial, Yi Jae decides to live the life of a detective and continue fighting crime. And with his partner Ji Hun, they continued to arrest various criminals. He was getting used to this life, believing that one day he would be killed in one of these operations. But Ji Hun always protected him. His partner ended up getting injured in action. And in the hospital, Yi Jae meets Ji Hun's family who loved him very much and always worried when he went to work. Yi Jae then promises Ji Hun's daughter that he will always protect him so that he returns safely to his family. However, in a pursuit to the rooftop of a building, they didn't realize he was armed. He shot twice, hitting Yi Jae and his partner. In an attempt to protect his friend and his family, he went after the criminal, who shot more times in his stomach, and the two fell from the building. Death reproaches him for continuing to be selfish. Yi Jae says he doesn't understand because this time, he sacrificed himself to save someone else. Death laughs in his face, calling him a fool and sends him to the next life. This time, a beggar. He watches the news that the police detective, considered a hero, has died in a chase, falling from a building. He decides to go to the funeral. However, everyone there greeted him with prejudice, thinking he was there for food and already wanted him to leave because of the bad smell. The sheriff even gave him a bag of food to go away. But on the way out, he was pushed aside as the prime minister came to see the deceased police hero. Initially, Yi Jae feels proud, but soon realizes he's just a beggar. In conflict with himself for not knowing who he is anymore, he finds his partner crying on the stairs. Trying to comfort him, he is reprimanded because his friend was furious and consumed by guilt over his death. The memory stone comes to give him new memories, but Yi Jae can't take it anymore and tries to escape. He stumbles on the stairs, hitting his head and dying before receiving more memories. Yi Jae now understands why death called him a fool, because he was proud of the achievements of others, using skills and memories that didn't belong to him. Moreover, Death still hints that he sacrificed himself in vain since his partner wouldn't die that day. Unable to bear this game any longer, Yi Jae ignores knowing who owns his next life and just runs to find his end and finish this game soon. However, the Truth Stone touched him and showed him that he was an ordinary man with the life Yi Jae dreamed of, a good job, married, and a happy family. However, he was fired, and without a job his wife asked for a divorce, claiming that he was no longer fit to take care of the family. Desperate for being a failure, his last wish was death. Thus he followed his destiny, standing in front of Taeyu's car and being thrown onto the sidewalk. From that moment, Yi Jae's fate was sealed because that was the man who died in his arms at the beginning of everything. Besides, it was the cause of awakening Taeyu's killing desire, making him commit several hit and runs including that of his beloved Jisoo. Touching Yi Jae triggered the events that would completely change his life, and this was Death's plan from the beginning. Back in Purgatory, Yi Jae just wanted to go to his last life, die and end it all. However, Death played another trick because as soon as he woke up, he was at home. To his surprise, looking in the mirror, he was in his mother's body. Upon receiving the memories, he realized how little he knew about his own mother. She had dreams, and one of them was to be a mother and have a happy family. She fell in love and had her longed-for family, but with her husband's death, only she and her son, little Yi Jae, remained. She raised him with a lot of love, even alone and facing difficulties. Due to having to take care of her son, she was fired, but she didn't give up on life. She continued to accept smaller jobs to support her son, but Yi Jae seemed not to appreciate her efforts. She always believed in her son and tried to cheer him up. However, Yi Jae was not as strong as his mother, and it was she who was calling her son on the night he gave up. The pain of receiving the news of his death was so great that she fainted. She still had the harsh task of identifying him at the morgue and, alongside Jisoo, saw her only son being cremated. After that, her life was a sea of sadness. At work, she was considered unlucky, and no one wanted to be around her. It was at this moment that Yi Jae discovered how much he had hurt his mother and how selfish he had been in his decision. He then decides to live as his mother as punishment. And now he feels ashamed of his own death, but decides to work anyway. His knees began to fail, and at home, taking pain medication, he sees a savings account in the bank made by his mother to buy him a house when he got married. However, having money now didn't change his increasing sadness. Looking at his memorial, he realized that his mother went there every day after work to see her son and blamed herself, believing that Yi Jae deserved to have had a better, more intelligent mother who would give him a happy life. 
The memories only became more painful, and he also remembered the day he made a promise to take his mother to the mountain where she met his father. Yijie decided to take this walk, despite his hurting knees. He managed to reach the top of the mountain and see how beautiful the place was. In thought, he finally asked for forgiveness from his mother and held her hand. On the way back, he slips and falls into the middle of nowhere. With an injured leg, he can't walk and screams for help, but no one hears him. He refuses to let his mother die like this and makes every effort to reach the trail, being rescued and waking up in the hospital with a broken leg. Even so, he chooses to give his mother a long life. He lived for another 32 years in her body, and in his final moments, his entire life flashed before his eyes. On a peaceful afternoon with a beautiful view, he has his best and most honest death. He tells death that he can't believe he missed her after so long. However, for her, not even a second has passed. Yi Jae pleads for one more life, this time, his own life. He now understands the importance of every moment lived and only asks for the opportunity to embrace his mother, at least one more time. Death congratulates him because with these words, he has just won the game. But he will have only one opportunity, one bullet, and if his gun doesn't fire, he will be judged by God. Yi Jae takes the deadly weapon, and to his happiness, it works. He returns to the top of the building just before giving up, but this time he answers his mother's call, and his letter to death flies away, thus ending the death's game.